kind of workshop. We're not going to do any more talking from here on. Got Will Donovan, who is an expert in rapid prototyping and service-oriented delivery. And he does this kind of stuff all the time. He's going to lead us on the second half of the workshop. So give Will, give Will a round of applause. We're here somewhere. So just to give a, a quick little bit of a background about where I come from. I don't have a science background. I studied science in that high school, dabbled in it a little bit. Um, my background comes from a, a range of areas, coming from business marketing to IT technology, e-commerce to sociology. So somewhere in that mix, I found that there's things in technology that's not just IT based, it's biological based. It's also, you know, the shoe on your foot is kind of a, an aspect of technology. Um, there's an application for it and how do you go through working out what's your problem, what's your process, what's the opportunities available and how do you pro prototype your idea or your business model or your concept in a sense that you're not spending millions of dollars to actually do something. What's the small thing you can do next week, next month that actually starts to trial and test this. So that brings up this idea of rapid prototyping where you actually sit there and think of this big vision but in a workshop, in a collaborative arrangement, and here is a great opportunity for good minds to get together for collaboration, but also something called co-creation, where something can emerge from the ideas that you actually put in. There's no actual end goal, kind of have a sense of what you're doing, but you just jump in and good minds end up creating something when they work together. So the way we do this as a bit of a thing, I've done this a few times around gamifying the idea of proper prototyping. So, it works within a time constrained environment. So you don't have time to sit there and dabble in a bunch of ideas, you know, is it this idea, is it that, what's the pathways for that? This isn't about drawing mind maps. It's about going, what's the one thing, what's an opportunity that we can work on now that we think will do something? It can be to save the planet, it can be to purify water. You know, whatever you think is that, that's the opportunity. Um, so I recommend only spending about two minutes on that. This first section is about 15 minutes. Um, so your goal is to identify what features this type of bug has. So we're about to hand out these kits. And in there is like an identity kit for parts. So there's some things in there for you to play with. But hey, this is just our suggestion. Um, we, you know, grab some paper. There's some post-it notes in the bags. Uh, come up with your own. There's a lot of smart people here that understand this type of stuff. Come up with something completely different. And run through and actually draw your first bug. So there's some paper. There's some texters. What's it going to look at? Uh, the, the idea behind the Spore uh, game, which is now going into Spore 2 and what makes it fun and engaging is you're learning through play. And so people are learning how to create bugs who have no background in bi biological technology. So they're actually creating things, but you get to go, is it going to have a beak? Is it going to have a filter? Is it going to be a vegetarian? Is it actually going to eat meat so it's got to eat other bugs? What happens when it grows up, when it becomes like a tribe? Is it going to have arms, legs? Is it going to be dominating? Is it going to be friendly? Is it going to be green? Is it going to be blue? These types of things. So have fun with it. Um, then there's a bit of a showcase that we'll do where we'll come together again. Showcase kind of um, where everybody can spread out, see what other people have done. Now here's the fun part. So I'll just get everybody to kind of pay attention. You're all wanting to jump in. The second part after the showcase is where you've seen other people's ideas. This is what we call the first iteration of prototyping. You kind of dabble in something, you spit it out, it's on paper, it's nothing real, it's all in your head. So you've seen what other people are trying to draw, your identity kit that you have, you've got blue tech in there, stick it to the paper. Work out how this thing's gonna work. And then out of that, steal other people's ideas. Because you're not just stealing them from nature, you're stealing from the room as well. And then we'll come back and then you can tell us all about your favorite bug that you've just created and what it will do in the world. So there's three things that I want you to really focus on. Hey guys, just before you begin. <laughs> You're all very eager. So three things that we, we do want when you're coming into this is just be clear and put something down on paper where you can actually present to everyone else. What will your bug actually do? Like what are you, what are you out to achieve here? What's the opportunity? Um, what, what will the bug react to? So how does it engage in its environment? Other pieces of bacteria? And what will it live off? You know, there's all these things that you can do. Jeremy's probably more familiar with this. So first things first. Yeah. All right, so, so to give you some ideas, thinking about what your bug might do. Your bug might glow in the dark. And you've got some parts to remind you of these things. It might 
change colour. It might smell like banana. It might produce compostable plastic. It might have a propeller and move around its environment. It might eat other bugs. It might react to light. It might react when other bugs are in close by. It might react to mercury in the environment or other heavy metals. <coughs> and then you have to think about how your bug is going to live, what is, where it's going to get its energy from. You can be creative here. It might get its energy from breaking down oil spills. Or it could be powered by solar energy. So you've got your kits. We've, we've got six people here to answer your questions. It's, it's been a little bit, possibly a little bit vague, the presentation, but can everyone who's going to be a facilitator for the session please come up here so they can see your faces? So we've got six people here who, who have a background in synthetic bi biology or a background in facilitation. Thank you. So we're here to help you get started on this task. Go for it. How many do you have? You've got 20, 20 minutes left. 15. Okay, so <coughs> yeah, everybody right, jump so in. Ten minutes of the first iteration. Find a group of people, sit with yeah. them, get the ideas flowing. If you don't have a kit, just put your hand up. We'll come and bring you something.
business bag is made from a certain material and it has we we started that's really cool. So you can tell when it's working. Yeah. 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 Ye
And so you've now got a defunct retrovirus leading to AIDS, RIP, and a little joke sign. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That, Give him a hand. Job. Okay, over to this group. Who would like to pitch? Understand. Yeah, but I promise that you um, cannot okay. okay. Um, we have a genetically modified bacteria that produces hydrogen gas to be used as renewable fuel. It's um, over here. It's in a system somewhat used like an engine. So it, the engine will ext extract the gas from um, the bacteria that excretes it as a, um, the gas as a waste product, and it will feed off um, salt water, and um, and yeah, there will be biosensors to um, limit and um, keep the colony in check. So. Yeah. Oh yes, the glowing anyway. bits. Okay. It's, um, when it's producing the hydrogen gas, it can't, the actual um, bacteria becomes fluorescent. It's genetically modified to do so, so you know it's producing the gas. Is that right? Yeah. Great <laughs> cool, job. Give me a hand. Do it together. <laughs> so, so the original idea was to, to come up with something that picked fruit from the back. Yes, or fish, but then we decided that was too hard. So we made fruit. Yeah. So, so what does it do? Um, it's a bug that excretes a wax that does something to preserve. <laughs> so it foods all over the fruit and that makes it That's right. fresh. <laughs> That's right. But we wouldn't want to eat that, so we, we got really clever and we, we had a suicide gene in the bone. So that as soon as it came into contact with saliva, <laughs> Fantastic. So a bug that poops on fruit. Yeah, hi, I'm Phil. Uh, I feel really intimidated because uh, there's a lot of hidden logic uh, being used for but I've only been exposed to this whole concept for about 15 minutes, so uh, we don't have to, I, I personally don't understand the technology, yet I, I would need to understand the interface between the technology and the human body, because our idea was simply to create a, um, a biological machine which reacts to um, a, 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 a degree of physiological changes occurring when, when a carcinogenic agent invades the host like the antibodies that are produced and that is a, a, a reaction that the body undergoes which you can then apply to uh, a sensor. I saw an example on the screen there of a, a biological film which can actually be programmed to create a message where you could do the same with um, you know, that idea of an invasive host. And, uh, you could either, either have it as a, I mean, it's just a cool thing, but you could either have it as a bagged under the skin which will change colour, or get into the idea of, of biological clothing that is, is uh, sensitive to, to our overall uh, physiological processes and, and it can reflect in visual language how we are traveling physically. But see, I don't understand the technology, so there was nothing I could really do with these technical systems analysis charts. So. But anyway. Great idea. I love the idea of the mood sensor that would change colour. Right over to this group.
So this is our, our landfill dwelling scarab like beetle, which eats plastic, shits diamond. <laughs> <laughs> So plastics, as we all know, uh, comprise mainly of hydrocarbons, hydrogen, carbon, oxygen. So the other thing this, this scarab-like beetle will produce is pure water. And it does this by uh, eating the plastic and ripping apart the you know, catalysis, like enzyme-like reactions within its belly, which go about producing the final products, which we're after. So these are the things that we found which can uh, probably help us along the way. And uh, they are, uh, there is the uh, lysozine, which um, breaks down cell walls so they'll fall apart. And we figured that this might be useful because we don't want this little bug running away and, and eating plastics all over the place. Although having diamond would probably still be all right. <laughs> um, the hydro, hydrogenase enzymes will convert protons uh, into hydrogen gas, um, which, well, there's hydrogen in there, so we thought we'd chuck that one in. Um, and this one here will seem like the most useful, which is something I can't pronounce. Uh, this is a combustible plastic, and uh, this part produces PHP from sugar, um, the anything a bug can eat. And um, that's kind of, yeah, where we got to. Um, our idea for a boat may have been covered already, but uh, the basic idea was a mood sensor. Um, it would, uh, something you could wear um, as an earring perhaps, was, was our idea. And it would pick up on chemicals like cortisone, um, oxyto uh, oxytocin, uh, adrenaline um, as the inputs. Um, and then uh, it would emit a, a, perhaps an electric charge of a certain voltage. Um, and that would be picked up by a wireless transmitter uh, maybe Bluetooth or something, that will then post the information over the internet and tell others how you feel. <laughs> so if somebody wants to stalk you, then they can tell what emotional state you're in that time. Um, our picture is of probably more of the person using this than the actual bug, um, although I don't see why it couldn't be the bug itself. Um, and, uh, and that's it. And, and as also shit diamonds as well. <laughs> But only when you're happy. <laughs> um, first of all, um, I'd like somebody to pronounce that for me. <laughs> that, that word there. Quatio redoxa. Aha, yes. Now, this is something which actually takes a proton out. And as soon as you do that, you get a charge. Okay, so what this one does is it is about you've got a brick wall. And you've got a number of wires, which are not particularly hard to put in. One of them extends slightly out from the wall. The other one is pretty well level at the wall. And you've got those wires you know, wall or your roof or whatever else you want. They go into a patch panel. One of the patch panels is positive, the other one's negative. You get a blob of our stuff, and you stuff it on the wall. And between solar energy, CO2, oxygen, and water vapor, you possibly the garden hose or whatever else. You spray the stuff and it grows. It grows and eventually covers your wall, covers your house, and you hopefully have some way of making your boundary so it doesn't go any further. <laughs> but the whole of this level, once the sun is shining, is actually producing a bias between its outer layer and what's attaching it to the wall. So you actually get electric charge, a very small one, but you've got enough of these pickups. You actually get enough to power your house for free, Jesus. and it's actually running straight off the sun and the ambient air, and plenty of carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere as we go. Oh. <laughs> we don't need to power well, carbon well. scrubbers. Um, our idea is to have a lot that purifies water. We're thinking about having it uh, during, purifies water through two forms, through heat, during, during the day. And then the other type of lab, type of lab is that it uses a 
the other bacteria to kill, to punch holes in the other ones. And I was thinking maybe we could add in another one where at night time it switches over, it kills itself. So at the end of the day, you have fresh water to drink. Mm. Mm. <coughs> Has any word not spoken yet? <coughs> Now we haven't actually got that much time left and all the ideas actually feel pretty formed. But let me put it out to the group. Who's learnt something from some other team that they would love to work on their idea for another two minutes just to polish it up so then we, we can take it forward and present it for the neighbor? A few ideas sparking. Okay, we'll do it this way. Put your hand up if you had a spark of inspiration from some other team that you'd like to incorporate into your bar. Put it right up there. There's a few of you. Okay, let's do that. So, two minutes. Incorporate the idea. And then we're going to bring them all up the front. And the, the photovoltaic one is another crowd favourite. Yeah, that's true. Right. Have we got one final nomination? Who, who else? I'd, I'd like to see that HIV one. Are, are we, are we, are we, <laughs> So we've got five outstanding groups up here, ready to pitch their idea one final time. Um, this was uh, the nude sensing earring, uh, which we're very proud of. Um, and the additions from the discussion before is that it would be powered by sweat. Um, because it's on your on your skin, which uh, which is uh, uh, I guess picked up by the proteorodoxin, which the word I've just learned now is the catalyst um, for the uh, for translating the hormones into the electrical charges of different voltages, um, and uh, that's about it. This this bug is an AIDS virus cutter detects it. It, it just Moves around randomly in the body. Hello? Yep. So uh, the thing is up in the body. Um, they bump into the AIDS virus. Then uh, there's a detector. They discover that it's an actual AIDS virus. And it grabs onto it, cuts it, and then releases it. Now it's in two parts. It's useless. And it gets flushed out of the body by the natural system. So it's a, an AIDS fighter. Mm. <laughs> Well, um, curing AIDS is one thing, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> eat plastic. <laughs> what, what, what can we say? <laughs> okay, well, um, I didn't entirely steal the shitty diamonds thing, but it did make me think, and I had another look at um, some of the other bits and pieces, which is precipitate calcium. Um, I think it's back on the chair there, sorry, I'll pick it up. Why not precipitate carbon lattice? in this particular thing, so you wouldn't actually have to get an electrician in and drill the, drill the wires, you'd actually get another bacteria and whatever else actually depositing um, you know, buckyball style um, carbon lattice within here so that the, 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 the positive negative bias that's generated by these things won't zap them once you get it to a high enough voltage, it will be confined to um, carbon which is actually pulled out of the air from carbon dioxide, incorporated into the structure. So you've basically just got a, you know, one bacteria does everything, um, solar cell. It's um, negative on the inside of the wall, it's positive on the side facing the sun, and it grows everything. You just put a couple of alligator clips on either side and you're powering yourself. Wow. 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 Okay, we were the um, genetically engineered bacteria using biosynthesis um, to um, excrete hydrogen gas. And um, we just tweaked it a little bit. Um, we used um, genetically modifying it, um, it's 
reproductive rate to match um, the lifespan. So it, the colony doesn't get out of control. So it'll be a stable colony size. And the amount of um, bacteria you have in any system will determine um, how much energy you get So from the system. So there'll be different sizes of systems to meet whatever energy you have. So energy, money. <laughs> Okay, so let's have a vote now. We've got energy and money self-regulating system based on the population. We've got a, a bacteria that produces a solar cell all in one unit. You stick it on your wall, you've got power for your home, free power forever, and it uses buckyballs. <laughs> We've got eight plastic ship diamonds. We've got grab an HIV virus, cut it in half. And we've got the mood sensing earring powered by your sweat. So, can I have votes for the mood sensing hear earring powered by your sweat? Put up your hand if you'd like to vote for that. We've got one, two, seven votes. <laughs> they're, they're proud of their creation. We've got the HIV killer. We'd like to vote for that. Come on, AIDS is a big issue. Two votes for AIDS killer. We've got eight plastic ship diamonds. Oh, come on in. The, the name, surely. Okay, and possibly the invention of the year, the, the wall that will power your home based on one battery or so. Wow. I wouldn't vote for that if I wasn't voting for my own. Okay, and we, we have make as much power as you want with a self-regulating bacterial system. We've, we've got one vote for that. Okay, I, I think the synthetic biology inventor of the year goes to the team with the solar power wall. Thank you. Thanks very much for playing Design the Bug today. We have got a flavors.me site, flavors.me slash design the bug. We'll be posting all of the creations from today on the site and any further comments you have, you can put up there. So that's it.